Hi, welcome to this week's GMBN Tech Show. Yeah, on the show this week, we have the new RockShox Vivid Air Downhill Shock. We've got some cool Crank Brothers tools to show you. We've got very cool, unique stem from Rulersman. And we've got some news, potentially devastating, coming up. So Mark, little little chat to you about music. Bit random, but outside of bikes, you know that quite into my DJing and stuff. Yes. And I was chucking a load of music together in a folder for a bit of crate digging for, uh, it's the Malvern's actually tomorrow if you're watching this show live on Wednesday. Um, and it made me think, most of my stuff I'm putting in there is remixes. Now I love originals, but I also love a remix. Um, in case you wonder what that is, in layman's terms, is taking the original file and you kind of take elements away and you rebuild it in a completely different style, if you like. And it's made me think about mountain bikes, because I feel that at the moment mountain biking is in a bit of an era of the remix, yeah. the mountain bike remix, yeah. So if you think in the early days, I mean there's an old Zaska frame hanging up there, that's a perfect Beautiful. example. Bikes were, were so different, there's so many different designs, so many originals, and it's not necessarily because all the designers were better, it's just that they, everyone was throwing stuff yeah. on the wall. They and were, they were just trying a lot of trying stuff. Trying everything, yeah. yeah. And then now, you know, skipped on what, 30, 40 years, whatever, we got to the point where Designs are a bit more refined, and yeah. we kind of know the right shape a bike should be for the intended purpose. You know, what wheel size it should have, how much suspension, rough angles. So now it's very much a case of marginal gains and improving things and the way things are produced and manufactured. So I kind of feel like we're in a sort of element of remixing here because well, they're playing around with original ideas. Examples? All right, so literal examples. We're going to throw a bike on screen now. This is a 1988 Ibis, I don't know the model name. Oh, uh, I see where you're going with this. Yeah, so yes. this frame had got carbon tubes uh, and it's got lugs. Yeah. Right, and it had the carbon tubes because the tubes were lighter and stronger than the original tubes on there. And at the time, manufacturing to make a monocoque frame didn't exist, so that's how they made it. Reminds you of something? <laughs> yes. Yes, look at that, one of my favourites. Check it out, the Atherton product. Yeah. They're all, they're all this beautiful uh, concept, very similar to that. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, obviously like a, totally different, but the, nodding to the same yeah, concept yeah. of the construction. I guess maybe a little bit, the GT Lobo. Yeah, exactly that. Maybe an interim yeah, <laughs> a version yeah. of. Do you know what, I, I, I think that's one of the most beautiful frames ever. Yeah, uh, I loved it. Everyone talks about Bona Kerr's bike and always say like, oh, the modern Lobo. You know, it's kind yeah. of got that look yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. I think that's why I like the new Bernicke yeah. bike. Yeah, I really like it. Yeah. Um, so what else? Is there any others? I mean, that's oh, a really good example. I can see exactly where you're going, but it must be, must be across the board, I expect. Yeah. Uh, just before we move on, just making it clear, like the Afton bike is the latest technology with yeah. additive manufacturing and stuff. It's, it's nothing like the Ibis, but we're talking about the concept here. So that was the original, and this is the remix of where things have got to now. Yeah. Um, so you could say the same with electronic suspension. So Fox Live Valve mm. and um, Flight Attendant for SRAM. Amazing, mm. absolutely amazing how it works. But that stuff has been played with before in the 90s. I want to say 97 when uh, K2 had a shot called, I think it was just called the Smart Shot. So far back. Yeah, and it, it had like a little crappy nine volt battery, you know, there's sort of oblong <laughs> shaped batteries in it. And it had a piezoelectric valve that was supposed to lock the shock to your movement you and open it to, yeah. to bump force. And it was all right, but obviously it was like a great concept, but just didn't work because the yeah. technology just wasn't there. And then someone obviously down the line has been like, we need to like figure this stuff out because yeah. this could be the future. And we're, we're already there. Now we've got it's this mad in the moment technology that's that literally- acts faster than you can act. Yeah. It's, it's mind blowing. Yeah, so what would what products would that be? That's the- Yeah, flight attendant, flight attendant. from, from RockShox, which yeah. you can have it. I mean, the other thing with flight attendant over the Fox live valve, of course, is it's wireless. Mm. So the, the live valve actually operates slightly faster because of the wires, but you've got the wires. Yeah. And then the, the RockShox setup arguably is cleaner and stuff. And, yeah. and we talk, we're talking an amount of time that you wouldn't even notice as well. Yeah. Like yeah. millisecond difference. Yeah. And the same with gears yeah. as well. We're on like wireless gears and electronic gears from the two big manufacturers. That's brand new, man. That's, that's brand not, new, that's never been done. 1992, Tour de France, <laughs> Mavic had that. that I, until you thing. said that earlier, I didn't know that. I mean, it was I awful, did. Yeah. but the idea was there. They were like, yeah. hey, we can remove cables and we can have shifting that only moves a specific I amount. Think that, I think this is cool because it's not necessarily the things themselves that are being remixed. No, it's the, the thought, concept. It's the thought over yeah. time. Yeah. Because the Atherton bike hasn't 
become a reality because they saw an eye. Oh no, hundred percent. It's just not. like the yeah. thought was yeah. there, and the yeah. impression that those designs over the years have had have affected things as they go along. Yeah. But we're very close to that point now where it's very hard to improve on them because they're so good. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah really absolutely. Cool. I mean, I mean, there's, there's there's other sort of vague examples as well. You could say high pivot bikes. When they were first designed, it wasn't necessarily designed because they had the best bump absorbing and stuff. Mm. It was just another design. Yeah. Like that bike that we're going to talk about a bit later in the show, the old Velici, that had an incredibly high pivot and it was yeah. awful. Someone stuck a cog on that thing. Just yeah. need a long chain and a cog. It's and you look where we are now, the designers have realised, hold on a second, yeah. that axle path and that is brilliant if yeah. you can manage these things and mm. they're doing it. Amazing. Clutch derailleurs, same thing. They came from early chain tensioners. Yeah. Literally like that Bullet Brothers thing to hold your rear derailleur stiff, basically. Yeah. Again, like that was like Heath Robinson style. It's like I'd made it in a shed, <laughs> not like a designer had done it. And then you've got, you know, the Clutch Tech height right yeah. as well, the original dropper post. Obviously a hydraulic dropper post now, incredible what they do. Mm. The original one was just a little spring. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, the thoughts progress, which is what we love about it, I guess. So, yeah, you're right, though. I'm, I was kind of wrong in saying a remix, but you, you get where I was coming yeah. from. Yeah, yeah, yeah the definitely, concept definitely. is what we're talking about. So what, what sort of remixes have you seen out there that you like? Is there anything, or perhaps you've seen an original that you prefer? Oh, crap, I've seen a remix. Oh, have you? Oh, yeah, but this is on the negative. Oh, no. I've mentioned it on the Dirt Shed show. I don't know if it's... Because it reminds me of that Zaskar you've got on the wall. Oh, it's one of the most beautiful, beautiful. frames ever, yeah. Well, they've remixed the Zaskar, haven't they? No. It's full suspension. What? Why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, I don't really? know. <laughs> That's what I oh, said. So what, is it like a high-end cross-country park or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's just like... You're not joking, It's an absolute piece of crap. And it's oh. got like... And it's full <laughs> sus. It's full <laughs> sus! It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> But it's not. We know the Zaska's a hardtail and it's an iconic bike. Should just leave it at that. God, I want it, yeah. I yeah. wish they had. Some remixes should stay in the past, then, shouldn't they? <laughs> okay, into news. <sighs> what were you going to say then? Uh, we've got two new tools from Crank Brothers. We've got the F11 and the F16. Yeah, I've got the F11 here. Um, it's got everything you would need and expect, obviously. This is the slightly... Uh, more stripped town version. Shall I do the nerdy thing? I'll go through the list of what's on it. Yes. So you, on both tools, you've got a two, two and a half, three, four, five, six, and eight mil Allen keys, T25 torx key, Phillips screwdriver, flat screwdriver, tire plug tool, which is quite cool. Yeah, it's I a love little how, case. That's great how on that just clicks on the back. I and really you've got like three that. plugs in there as well, which is super useful. Yeah. So what's the F16 got that the F11 has on it? Okay, so you've got chain tool on this one. Yeah. Uh, you've also got a spoke key on it, and you've got, I believe there's one, one other thing, um, valve cord mover as well. Mm. You've got the ability on both the tools to store chain links as well, like quick links in here, which I'd recommend anyone carrying on their bikes, to be fair. Just don't worry about the brand, just get the correct speeds for your chain, 10, 11, 12, whatever. Um, yeah, and it's got a bottle that's built into the system. Oh, wicked. Magnetic design. Yeah. They're great. I've got a really old one of these. I don't know what F number it is, but it's really old and it's still trucking on quite nicely. Yeah, I always think these things, you know, if you spend a bit of money on these things, obviously it's uh, 49.99 for and these, and 10 yeah. pound more. Um, they last forever. They absolutely last yeah, forever. Yeah, they um, do. It's something to go on and on. Fantastic little tools. Happy Enjoyed days. Um, next up is a new bike from Rose Bikes, who I've got to say I'd almost forgotten about because for quite some time they had like quite a presence in the UK, and now because of Brexit, another champion thing because of Brexit, they're no longer bringing bikes into the UK because of the problems it costs. Um, however, for the rest of the world, you can still get their bikes. And their new downhill bike is called the Scrub, and this is it on screen, Ooh. which a complete sweeping statement here, talking mm. about the whole remixes thing. It does bear a little resemblance to that new GT Fury. I mean, I know yeah. this isn't a high pivot, Silhouette, but the linkage yeah. on it and the seat stay, it's no bad thing. I think this is a really good looking bike. Yeah. It's handsome. Quite, I'm it's quite handsome. surprised. I think yeah. it almost looks like a prototype, this one, as well. That's so, nice. 200 mil travel, classic four bar design, so it's going to be mega active. Alloy frame, it's got external cable routing, which I love, and the, the brake hosing runs on the underside of the down tube with a protector over it. So it's mm. super good for mechanics to work on. Uh, it's got shock housing as well to basically protect the shock from mud and stuff hitting it. Again, a brilliant thing, well thought out. You can run it twin crown or single crown for coil or air, mullet or 29 inch. So literally up to you how you want to set it. Head angle, 63 to 64. Chainstay 435 and the reach between 435 and 505, and you can get them complete bikes from 3299 euros. 
I think it looks awesome. It's a cool it looking really bike. Good. Love it. Um, yeah. Should we talk about RockShox's Vivid Shark? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so um, eagle-eyed amongst you might have seen the, in the boxer video where I put the boxer on Neil's bike, there was also this shock hiding in plain sight, just with a bit of black <laughs> tape over it so you couldn't see. So the new RockShox Vivid Shock. So taking a bit of a different form, again, if we're going to go down the remix road here, at a glance, if you were to like have two shocks blacked out here, mm. the outline could be very similar to the Fox DHX2. Yeah. Um, no bad thing, because that's an excellent shock. Could just be a coil shock though, couldn't it? <laughs> well, I, I know a few people would be like, "What? Well, just get a core shock because that's what." They but like. this is so much more tunable, right? You this can just is do, I, like this shock. I look at it and go, "I don't know how to set that up." This shock has got so much going on. I mean, rock shocks say uh, this is the most coil-like in feel you're ever going to get in an yeah. air shock, and actually. Given how good the, the recent suspension forks have been and their previous shock that was a year or two old, I forget now, uh, this has got the same technology plus more. So this has got high and low speed compression, adjustable externally, rebound adjustment. The rebound knob, you can actually take it off and it's got three mil Allen key in it and you can adjust the high speed compression with that. Ooh, nice. And also like the bottom out adjustment. So this is the cool thing about the damping on this. So they're using what they call touchdown technology. This is their latest thing. So it's position sensitive damping. So it has different amounts of damping applied to basically the shock during different parts of the stroke. Right. So we talked about a DT fork that had position sensitive damping rather than speed sensitive damping. So you're not talking about velocity of the shaft, you're talking about where it is in the travel. Right. Um, so what they say is the compression is bypassed in the first 10% of shaft travel. So the very beginning of it moving, it's incredibly sensitive because there's no, no damping holding it back. Right. So super fluttery, so that will be where the coil feel comes from. Yeah. Then they say the next 70% is very controlled in both low and high speed in terms of damping. So that's where your major adjustments come in. And the last 20% features the adjustable hydraulic bottom out, which is a fairly new feature. We have seen that on the Deluxe previously, the Super Deluxe, and now it's on this shock as well. So it's kind of a three position, kind of three phase mm. compression on it, which sounds really good to me. Uh, and that would go hand in hand with what they say about the coil feeling. Uh, you've got volume bands, are basically external volume bands that clip on the outside under the external can, uh, in a similar vein to how it does on some older RockShox shocks and also with that Fox DHX2 shock. Uh, really good system, really super easy, literally remove a pin, slide, slide the outer can off and you clip on the amount of volume spaces you want. Retails 699 to 729 US dollars, 839 to 874 in euros or 749 to 779 in pounds sterling. I mean, I love this stuff. I really, really love RockShox stuff. It's a big old spend though, isn't it? It, it is. But, you know, you, you'll be hoping that, you know, if you're in a market for a bike, it's going to come on there. But yeah. it, it can make a huge difference mm. yeah, to how your bike rides. Yeah. You've got to know how to set it up there and put the time in, haven't you? 100%. That's tricky. Oh, we've got loads yeah. of videos on that. Yes. Yeah, we've done the, the odd one here and there. Yeah. Um, right, what about, I'm um, talking about our. Uh, Remixes. Yep. What about direct mount stems? That's something I've yeah. definitely seen in the past, and you love the new ones. Or yes. this one in particular, anyway. Yeah, so I saw this stem by, forgive me, I think it's Rulersman um, on Instagram. This guy is a wizard in terms of suspension and geometry and stuff. I've followed for a little while, or you might have heard of Paul Aston. He's like, loves the, the stuff that this guy does. But I saw this stem pop up and I was like, oh, that looks really similar to an old Mondrake stem mm. I've got. And I even said that on his post. I didn't mean in any disrespect. I love the fact that he's revisiting this technology. Yeah. So when I say direct mount, I don't mean direct like, as in mounting onto the top of the stem. I mean direct almost on top of the steerer tube. Yeah, different tube concept. Itself, yeah. So this is a stem in a few different angles you can see on screen. So um, the, the stats is 15 millimeters long, so 15 mil offset. So you couldn't get that without the stem being on the top. And just so you know my reference, that is a Mondrake stem that's 20 mil, and they also did a 10 mil, which you can see on screen here. This is back in 2014. Obviously, this is quite outdated now. It's quite narrow. Mm, like yeah, this new stem yeah. is is 60 mil wide. This is 40. So it's stronger, it's beefier, and it, it just looks amazing. But you might be thinking, why on earth would you want a stem that short? And the reason being, it puts you basically more in line with your steering axis, putting mm. your weight further back. Mondraker did it in combination with their forward geometry concept, where if you skip back to like 2013, 2014, when they were experimenting with it, the average stem length on a trail bike was about 70 mil. <laughs> so. Which, I mean, that was short, which, yeah. but it sounds mad. Yeah. Um, and what they did was they took took the stem length down to 10 mil and put the 60 mil on the front triangle of the bike. Yeah. So your bars would be in the same position, 
but your frame would be longer and your front wheel would be further out in front of you. Yeah. Which just makes more sense. Yeah. It's more like a motorbike. And I like what you said to me earlier on about you can like upsize or downsize a bike by using a stem like this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you could be like, because the bike's measured in like length. Well, well the, first, yeah, the yeah. first thing you said to me was like, you'd have to have a really long bike for that. Yeah. These days. But yeah. yeah, that's the whole great thing about the way people are making bikes now yeah. is the seat tubes aren't yeah. growing, it's the length that's going. Yeah, like so you that. can be in charge of how long you want it to be. I'd, I'd love to get hold of one of these, I think they're really cool. I was a massive fan. In fact, there's going to be a video down there about this technology uh, and my thoughts on it on a, a video I made in lockdown. And also, we're going to throw in a video from Rollersman in the comments down there because he talks about the geometry of stems. You know, he uses extreme examples like mm -hmm. zero to, I think, like 70 or 80 mil, and it's a great video. Yeah, all right, Rulesman, he's done enough. Will you send the guy a stem, please? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm just going to read a few more little facts on it just to be nerdy. So um, there's only, I think, 99 of them uh, being produced, very limited amount, although I suspect he might make more. 31.8 um, mil bar only, 15 mil offset, obviously a top cap's built into it. Um, it's got titanium M6 bolt in it, 40 mil tube clamp height, 147 grams, 60 mil wide clamp surface, and it's EFB, uh, no, no, EFBE certified, so downhill e-bike category five, made from 7075 alloy on a five axis machine, and it comes with a copper grease kit as well in that nice clear anodized finish. I think it's awesome. What's the difference between category five and category four? Um, intention. <laughs> Basically. I can't believe you had an answer for that. Well, that's like down, downhill basically is like the toughest category, but e-bike is putting the same, not for intention, but basically because of the weight class, combined rider and chassis. Whatever. Yeah, it's good, isn't yeah. it? Well, there you go. I think it's cool. Uh, I'd love to know what you think. Uh, you might disagree, you might think it's not cool. Let us know in the comments down there. Get involved. Just going back to stems, two seconds. Sorry, yeah. I forgot to say, like, a lot of people have toyed with this idea in the past, various different bike brands. Do you remember Rotec, downhill bike? Yes. The way yeah, back, yeah. that had a direct stem. In fact, that was the nearest thing to a motorbike I've ever seen in terms of downhill bikes or yes. any bike. But Pace did a bike, here's a shot of the oh, Pace, in 1991. Yeah. Um, and it was called the DPD, and it was named after uh, one of the guys from Pace, basically. Um, you want to pay attention to the that. The purple one. one. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I well, know. What one. could his name have been? Well, let's get to quizzes, yeah. actually. Let's get to the quizzes, all right? Here's the first question in the quiz this week. What bike company was Dave Cullinan riding for when he won the Worlds in Bramont? I saw this question earlier on, I got it wrong. Really? Yeah, the answers are going to come ahead of a bit, so you can have a think about them while we're doing the show. Uh, the Pace, DPD, was the downhill bike from 1991, that nice big purple rig, um, and took its name from one of the Pace designers. Any idea what DPD stands for? Delivery company, isn't it? <laughs> um, and the next one, which X World Cup races helped develop Mondraker's forward geometry concept that Dolly mentioned earlier? There's your questions for the quiz. Answers coming up a bit later. It's just for fun. It's just for fun, that bit, Dolly. It is always just for, for a laugh. fun. Yeah, what else have we got? We've got some comments, haven't we? We have got some comments. So, yeah, so, I mean, all sorts of stuff. We're talking about World Cup stuff. Um, we're looking at the brands people yeah. are riding at. And, uh, we just looked at, in, in case you didn't see last week's show, I just did the gold medal positions in all oh, categories. I saw it. Completely out of interest just to see what people are riding. I know yeah. it's not a reflection. Um, so Gustavo Ferraz says, uh, loving the show here in Brazil. A couple of years ago, Calloy, because I said I'd, I'd forgotten basically that Avanzini yeah. uh, moved to, to Calloy over Cannondale. He did, it, yes. It caught me short when I looked at it. I was yeah. like, oh, didn't recognise it. So apparently Durrell, who um, used to own Cannondale, yeah. they purchased... Um, Calloy or something. Yeah, purchased by Durrell. Uh, I've seen he started his career with Calloy and last year decided to return to him to yeah. develop a new competition bike. And just won the World MTB Marathon Doesn't get much better Championship. Than that. Yeah, oh, I'll got, tell you what. Got that, his rings back. That was emotional. Yeah. So Man, good, I, I, that guy. Yeah. Awesome. He is awesome. cool, actually. You know what? He's a really... I, I chat to him a little bit. Yeah. He's like the nicest dude. Yeah. He's so nice. Isn't he he's like so a cool. superstar over there? Oh, mega like a proper, star. Yeah, like, so he had like a, a national superstar. He had like, you know... Uh, um, Fly on the wall documentary following him, really? this type thing. Yeah, he's a bit. I need to see some of this stuff. It's cool. Yeah, it's very cool. I love um, it. Another comment here, Chris King nine nine one zero, and he says, uh, "How about two legends who had bikes named after them? Gary Fisher bikes and John Tomac bikes, of course." Absolutely. But you I didn't mean, mention them on purpose, really. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was kind of alluding to. 
current bike brands yeah. rather yeah. than previous. Yeah. And, and actually loads of people said, said the same thing and also pointing out other brands I didn't reference. Brody Bikes, of course. Yeah. Uh, Foes, Brent Foes. Yeah. That okay. was a mistake. Ancelotti. Always yes. forget about them. Sick yeah. bikes. Shaz Roberts and Dave Yates, British frame makers. Yeah. Richie. Yeah. I mean, it's not Von very Trager. imaginative of these guys to just basically name the bike after themselves. But, really, but, is but it? you did also, yeah. with all of those, you yeah. all forgot about one that I forgot about as well. Ashton Bikes. Oh, yeah. They <laughs> did it too. Yeah. He had a bike company. That was sick. <laughs> uh, next up, this is an interesting comment from Brian Speed. He says, I don't think brands make much difference. Um, in mountain bike racing, it comes down to the rider. Ooh. All those top brands, high-end items are great. You could put someone like Jackson Golson on any brand and you'd still win. Mm, oh, hang on a minute, let's pause there a second so I'll think about that. I, that messes with my head, right, because I half agree yep. and I half disagree. Because, great person to pick, Jackson Goldstone. He is a vicious talent, right? He's, he, he's yeah. like physically breaking all the rules of physics because yeah. it just doesn't look like that kid could go as fast as he goes and beat the people he beats, right? But he does. But how much better, like I, I get it, he could get on any bike of the pretty good bikes and do well, but how much better he's got to be for having Steve Pete, Greg Minnar with him day in, day out, that stuff's gold. That's gold. You it can't, is. You can't, you can't buy that. Well, you can. You have to pay Greg Manor and Steve Pete a lot of money. But it's like you can't, that stuff's hard to get. And I think maybe we get a faster Jackson Goldstone for it. Yeah, I think you do. I think it's the confidence thing, isn't it? But then it comes down yeah. to the people as well. Yeah. Like, you know, going out on a limb here, Petey, when he was running Orange back in the day, that guy at that time with his confidence and the mm -hmm. way he was riding, he could have ridden a shopping bike down the hill yeah. as quick as some people. You yeah, know, I guess I, I, I guess that's what your man's saying. But I, yeah, I mean, it's, I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle. But I love yeah. that. I love that thought. I like that thought. I could talk about it all yeah. night. And and the last one that I, I laughed and I actually responded to this one when it, this one came in <laughs> from Mark Peterson. who says empirical and metric. Because oh, I, I had a bit of a grumble no. about just the laugh of all the measurements yes. we have. He said, I'd love to see a show on this in the bicycle industry and how it affects the consumer. What's your perspective on it? Um, without even reading your whole question, just because it's, there's a lot of it, it's on screen. Yeah, it's mad. Mm. If, if, oh. to, if to think that you can spec out a bike by saying, oh, it's got an inch and eighth headset, it's got a 30 mil stem, <laughs> it's got 31.8 seat tube, uh, 19 inch, Seat tube, like mm. it's just it's a, it's, it's, it's a mullet, and then the wheels, DB rear, twenty nine inch front. <laughs> front. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's absolutely bonkers. But somehow, and I think this is reflective of what I posted as a response. I, it annoys me, but also don't mind it. But I think that's only just because that's what I've known yeah. for the entire time I've I've worked around bikes since I was fourteen and first started working shops. It was like that then. Yeah. You yeah. know, with the road so world stupid. talking in centimetres and <laughs> millimetres, and yet we're talking in inches and millimetres and centimetres. And, it's oh. strange because the sort of measurements become the generic term for the thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I don't know. It's a really strange one, and we seem to love it in mountain biking, but we could scrap it if we wanted to. I know. Very easy. You know people will kick off about it, though. Because <laughs> yeah. they'll grumble whether it's right or wrong. Like, yeah, it's one of those yeah. things. That's what makes us special. Um, tell you what, let's go into Rewind. and oh. uh, Let's have a look at Darren Tapp's progress with his Yeti. Look Man, at this. I, tell you, I remember when he had... I mean, I don't know the story of this particular frame, but I remember when he had one of these yeah. back in the day. And it's one of the coolest bikes. Even, even I had that shocking... Bad pun, rock shots, pull shock on it. Yeah, gross. No reflection of the brand, but generally any pull shock on a bike in that era just used to fall to bits. And you were, you were saying earlier, was this like, there was a Schwinn version of this? That's right, yeah. So yeah, you had the look, the, there was the Schwinn had the four banger and the straight eight. Right. And this was, I, I forget with the Yeti to be honest, but yeah. they both had the same back end on the way that they worked and stuff. And Neil actually rode the more recent version of the Schwinn that didn't have the pull shock, it actually had. In fact, here's one with the pull shock just so you can see the difference between them. Yeah. Um, and then there's one with the, the push shock, essentially. Yeah. It had an extra linkage in it, yeah. and it weighed a ton. Yeah, I've got to say, but... the pull shock is not for me. And Neil, you mean our Neil? Did he yeah. race down there, did he? He did. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Tell you what else we've got in Rewind, um, a bike I know well. This, uh, the Saracen, but it's actually a Velici. That's right. Actually, back in the old day, nearly a high pivot, not a high pivot. It's basically 
like you talking about re uh, remixing ideas. Man, this bike's nearly like it's so old, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's so on it. Yeah, so I put a little post up the other day because I've actually had this bike since the beginning of lockdown, just in storage. I thought never actually done anything with this bike. Mm. Thought I'd better talk about it. Mm. Um, it's very yeah. cool. It's so, very cool. so a quick background on this bike. So the frame is manufactured by an Italian factory called Velici that used to do manufacturing for Marzocchi and various other brands. And this frame was essentially designed by Marzocchi purely to test their forks and shocks. It was never supposed to be a production bike, it was just like <laughs> a mad. test bench, if you like, because yeah, yeah. uh, they were into making forks and shocks, not frames, because everyone else made the frames. And skipping on a little bit, so Marzocchi technicians had one of these at a race, Dave Cullinan, who was riding for Iron Horse at the time, who only had hardtails, saw it and was like, oh, what's that? And they're like, oh, have a go on it sort of thing. Yeah, one pedal on it around the sort of parking lot. I need that bike. R rang, rang his yeah. boss at Iron Horse, was like, dude, get me that bike, put Iron Horse stickers <laughs> on it, I'm going to win Worlds. And, and he did. And was the fact that yeah. they did and he did. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, gah. Yeah. But then there's a the whole thing, that was the year where he jumped the, the bridge. Jumped the uh, corner, Bremont. yeah. yeah he, t he had to basically time jumping like a tabletop, this bridge in between the ski lifts. So you had to brake check on the way in so he didn't hit the ski lift. <laughs> so there's just so many cool things about it. Yeah. It was a legendary run, and I always remembered it differently, but um, we'll get to that in the quiz. But uh, yeah, that bike, I mean, so many brands rebranded that bike yeah. as their own. Like the, Everyone was like, get me a Velici bike yeah. and get me some stickers to P put on P it. PT rode one as a Kona. He wore it. Uh, he wore it as a Kona, and he rode it as a Saracen. Saracen. Yeah, because PT was on the team. In fact, PT... Titley, Andrew Titley, that is. Helen yeah. Mortimer as well. Yeah, Kerry Basin. Kerry Basin, uh, Steve Pete, Rob, Rob Warner. Rob Warner guy. Yeah, uh, Rob Warner rode one of these on You Bet on TV where he got <laughs> yeah. beaten by Rally Car. Um, <laughs> Only but, just. But yeah. Only yeah, just. Only just. Yeah. Only just. And if you look at this shot here, you can see some faded mark on the chainsail, the swing arm, yeah. which says Esquire and Course, because it was a huge team. Yeah, it time. was a huge team, Doddy. Yes, yeah. it was a huge yeah. team with a lot of really good sponsors, didn't it? Have? Yeah. Yeah. They didn't pay anyone though, did they? They didn't pay me. Uh, yeah, I don't think they paid Warner. It's a long story there, but we won't get into it. <laughs> but I know all about that team. But anyway. But either way, moving was, on. It's it's ultimately, I think, the first major mass-produced downhill bike on the basis that so many yeah. teams used it because it wasn't the technology then. Yeah. Because like, the Intense M1 became that bike later down the line. Yeah. And of course, a much better example of it, but this really is kind of where it started. I mean, and I just want to try a little experiment, right? Okay, so just uh, throw throw the, the uh, Saracen up on the board there. Thanks very much. Right, so take the Saracen, okay. Okay, graphics, please add a little cog just up there. The there, add wheel. that little cog. Yeah. Now draw me a nice long chain. There you go. Look at that. That's a modern bike. It's a modern downhill bike. Solved. <laughs> Brilliant. Done. <laughs> so when, when you pedal this thing with the chain mm. where it currently is, it, it's got, it's almost like, it must have like, I don't know what the percentage would be, 100% anti-squat would cancel out the forces, yeah? Yes. So this must have like 1,000% anti-squat. You pedal it and it just goes <laughs> dunk, dunk. Like it is horrific. Yeah. But I can that see was seen, it in my that head. That was seen as a good thing back then because yeah. all the other bikes used to just go like that squat. Yeah. This one extended. Very so, strange. Yeah, it's very crazy. strange how the bikes have developed over the years. But very cool. Always good to appreciate where we came from and like yeah. thankfully that's in the past. Yeah. Um, very cool bike though. Yeah. Uh, tell you what, we sort of gave away the answer. Let's come back to the quiz. Yeah. Um, so, I hope you caught it, but what bike was Dave Cullinan riding for when he won that Worlds in Vermont? Well, firstly, what did you think it was Well, I, I stupidly remembered him on a Diamondback, but that's oh, because yeah. but he that went was also to Diamondback a as world champion. That was a yes, Felici. Yeah. He must have said, make me a version of that. Yeah, yeah. so I, yeah. I just always remember him in that Diamondback kit. I don't know yeah. why. It really, yeah. They had such a cool look to their team One foot one tables, point. always. Oh, so nice, so nice. Yeah. Um, so the answer was... Iron Horse. Iron Horse. But yeah. it wasn't. It was a Velici. It was a Velici. <laughs> That's right. Um, the Pace DB, DPD, the downhill bike, um, Doddy got that great shot of it back at Mulvans last year in purple and looking brilliant. What does DPD stand for, Doddy? Duncan's Purple Descender. <laughs> Love it. I would, yeah, why yeah. not? There was a thing, there was a, like we had the DCD as yeah, well. Dave's Chain Device. Yeah, it was, there was yeah. a thing back then. Name it after, yeah, letters. Um, which L, what X World Cup racer helped develop Mondraker's forward geometry concept? I know one of them. 
Which one do you know? It's got to be Burrell. Yep. Fabian Burrell. Definitely. And yes. the other one was Cesar Rojo. So he used to race World Cups and he designs for many different companies, including yeah. his own called Uno. Uno, which for a little while was winning the World Champs the other day. The guy Stand sat on the hot seat. In the, I was like, oh my God, and Uno is going to win Worlds. Yeah. He's done, he's done development work for Intense as well yeah. on their bikes. And yeah, very cool yeah. stuff. So we've got some big news. Oh, God. <laughs> so some big news, right? Um, Doddy's leaving. Yeah. Oh, God, I feel so bad telling them. I know, I don't know why I'm dude, smiling. Dude, you don't know, know. what you're doing. I know. It's so I bad. Know. I, know. I know, I know. I mean, it's not bad. It's no, good. It's, I'm really excited about it. I am sad about it, but I'm moving on from GMBN Tech. Uh, it's been just over six years now, oh. and I think it's awesome what we've built here. I mean, it's so cool. I don't know an online community like it. Mm, it's like, been it's everyone been... helps each other. Everyone's really positive. I've made some, I think, amazing videos of all different types. Well, I made a, off. made a video fairly recently, and I think mm. it's one of the best. And it's actually, I didn't have that much involvement in it. It's you're going to see it at the weekend. It's super cool. You know, we basically pimp someone's bike out, and they know mm. nothing about it. Wow, and I've just been it. thinking, I've, there's a bunch of videos I've done. I just think like. When I did the video on the clunker that's no longer there because it's gone back to the owner, I actually thought like if that was my last video, I'd be happy because yeah. I felt like my career had gone full circle. Yeah. But I'm kind of sad about it. It's 23 years this year as yeah. a mountain bike journalist and I'm not going to be a mountain bike but journalist. But yeah, it's going to be a slightly different direction for you working yeah. with it. I mean, we won't go into it because you save that for your social yeah. wonderment, you know, yeah. another time. But there are, are some lucky brands getting this guy. Oh my God. I've got a very a very interesting opportunity landed on my lap. So I love the bike industry. I love the bike industry perhaps more than anything else. Like it's really close to my heart. It's what I know and it's the people I know and love. And ultimately it's delivering bikes and products for people like yourselves. And a particular company that I've been friends with for a long time contacted me and they're like, we're looking for someone to do various things, including test work, research and development with them, which to me is just like, oh my God, like this is what I've always wanted to do. Um, and some other stuff helping yeah. up front up the brand. And I was like, Why, do you know what? Like, that might sound yeah. like me. Sounds, I mean, you've, you've told me all about it, I, I know, and it sounds absolutely amazing. Yeah. But that doesn't really help any of us, Doddy. I'm sorry. So next week is, I mean, what? this isn't it. He's not no. going right this no, minute. I'm still here for another week. He's, the next week yep. is Doddy's last GMBN Tech show. It is. Um, which is going to be, I, I don't know how you're going to get through that. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to be laughing. I'm taking a guess there's going to be me crashing on that burn probably 5,000 yeah, times. Yeah, we're going to be having a look at right. a re-look re at what Doddy's <laughs> done over the years um, and sending him on his way with smiles and love, of course, because we wish you the best, man. Thank can't, you. Can't wait Thank to see you. what you do. But I guess the comments now, please fill with cry faces oh. and guesses to what don't, he's doing next. Oh, don't get me going. Don't get me going. <laughs> They're going to describe a job and you go, oh, well, that one. Oh no, uh, that, might, might, that might happen. Might happen. Uh, but um, seriously, thank you to all the GMBN Tech viewers for all the support uh, and all the encouragement and also all the sort of shaming stuff as well for yeah. saying you got that wrong. It's like, yeah, yeah I, know. I, need, I needed to hear that. So. And dude, don't, don't put me there now. Look, Not until the last day. Uh, don't, don't, do, don't do this now. Well, thank me then. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's it for this week. Bombshell time, I'm afraid. But that's just the way it goes. You're going to have to get used to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see you next week on the show. Get involved in the comments uh, and have a bit of fun down there. Start describing Doddy's future. Yeah, yeah we're probably going to go and have a beer. Yeah, see you next week. See you later. Thank you.